Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about Halloween. For those of you that don't know what Halloween is, it's a tradition. It's an event. It's not really a celebration. I guess you could call it that. It's something that happens at the end of October every year and it involves candy and costumes and a lot of other things which I will be explaining in this lesson. Uh Halloween for me as a child was a very enjoyable time because my parents would take me out for Halloween. I would get dressed up and we would go to all of the neighbors houses and we would get lots of candy. Sometimes we would even get pop like soda. Uh, and one of our neighbors even gave us money uh, at Halloween. So, that was kind of cool. But uh, if you don't know what Halloween is, it's coming up this weekend. Stick around for this lesson and I will explain all of the aspects of Halloween to you that you need to know to have a good conversation about it in English or at the very least to understand other people when they talk about Halloween. So, as you can see here, um most graphics or images that you find for Halloween, they'll have things like skulls and bats and spiders and witches hats and jack-o'-lanterns which I'll talk about later but they're not images of fun things which is kind of strange because Halloween is something that happens once a year and generally, it's something that is fun. Halloween happens on October 31st. It's in a couple of days and on that day, uh it's usually fairly cool weather in our area but in spite of the cold, kids will go out and they will go from house to house. They will go from door to door and they'll ring the doorbell or they'll knock and then they'll say trick or treat. Now, I think a long time ago, trick or treat meant either give me a treat, give me some candy or I will play a trick on you but it's not very often that kids actually play tricks on people at Halloween. 99.9% of the time, kids say trick or treat and the person at the house they are at will give them some kind of candy or chocolate. So, trick or treat, I'm going to talk about this on two slides because trick or treat is what kids say. So, they ring the doorbell, ding dong. When the door opens, they hold out their Halloween bag and they say trick or treat and then the person usually gives them some kind of candy. We also use it as a verb though. So, you can say that you're going to go trick or treating. Okay, well, not exactly a verb but um you can say that you are going to participate in the act of trick or treating. So, someone at work yesterday just said, are you taking your kids out to go trick or treating this weekend? And I responded by saying, no, um my youngest kid is too old for uh to go trick or treating. Usually in our family, once our kids are about 12 years old, they don't go out trick or treating anymore. We don't take them out trick or treating. Um just so you know, with little kids, parents usually go with when they go trick or treating and when they're around age 12 or 13, they might go with a group of friends trick or treating. Um but uh, our kids are too old to go trick or treating but um we will be home. I'll show you something in a sec. We will be home on that evening and we will of course be handing out candy. Um usually uh kids will dress up in a costume. So, they will decide what they want to be for Halloween, okay? They'll decide how they want to dress up for Halloween. So, a common question will be this. What are you gonna be for Halloween? And that means what costume are you going to wear? What character or um what are you going to dress up as? When I, when I was a kid, you could either be a cow, a pirate, a cowboy or a princess. I think we only really had four Halloween costumes at our house um and so you would choose one of those when you went out. Of course, I used the verb to dress up already. Um either you say I'm going to be Mario for Halloween. I'm going to wear a Mario costume for Halloween or I'm going to dress up as Mario for Halloween. A few different ways to talk about how you are going to um dress up in order to go out for Halloween. And maybe you'll wear a mask. You can see this kid has a little mask on. Um she has a mask that has a little it looks like a little beak. Maybe she's trying to pretend to be a bird. Um so you can not only dress up uh as people, you can dress up as animals as well. As you might have heard when I said 
I would dress up as a cow sometimes for Halloween. I think my mom actually made the cow costume. I should ask her about it today. I'm going to see my mom tonight. I should ask her about the cow costume. We'll probably have a good laugh about it. So, some of the most popular costumes. Um at Halloween, the probably the most popular costume is to dress up as a superhero. When I give out candy this weekend, I will probably see a few Batmans, some Supermans, some Wonder Womans, uh probably a few Black Widows, probably um Iron Man, uh Captain America. All of the superheroes that you see in movies usually show up at your door um but usually a lot shorter because they're kids. Um so, you will see a lot of superheroes. I think uh Batman is probably one of the most popular ones. Although, last year, I did see a lot of kids dressed up as Iron Man as well. Um another common costume is to be a pirate. If you're not sure what a pirate is, a pirate is someone from a long time ago who would sail around on a boat and attack other boats and steal all of their gold and other things that were valuable. Uh so, for some reason, this has survived as a uh, as a Halloween costume quite often. Uh, I think because it's simple. If you wear a white poofy shirt and a hat and find a plastic sword, you're basically a pirate. So, it's a simple costume for parents to uh put together for their kids to wear. Uh sometimes you just dress up as normal people. Kids will dress up as construction workers. Uh they'll dress up well, I was gonna say as teachers but I've never seen that happen. Um but kids will dress up as construction workers. They will dress up um as firefighters. Um I think I have one here. They will dress up as regular jobs as well. Um as I mentioned, one of the costumes we had as a kid was a princess costume. I think my mom found a dress somewhere and so, my sisters sometimes would go as a princess. Still a very very common costume at Halloween to see kids come as a princess. Oh, I think I went the wrong way. Um sometimes kids dress up as a mummy although this costume doesn't always survive the evening. A mummy is uh someone who yeah, well, I don't know if you've ever watched a movie with mummies in it. Uh mummification is something they do to people after they pass away thousands of years ago in Egypt um uh, and they would put them in the pyramids but mummies have lots of white strips of cloth around them. So, it becomes kind of um I guess a relatively easy costume although most of the time when someone dresses up as a mummy, the 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 cloth starts to fall off as the evening goes by. And then we said firefighter. Another very common costume is to dress up as a ghost. Um I think this is a common costume as well. Sorry, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just pulling up my slides over here for a second because I need to kind of follow along. Where did they go? I can't. I the alphabet's not working for me in my brain right now. I'll find them later. Uh a ghost is a very common costume because all you need is an old white sheet and you cut a few holes in it and voila. That's a French word but we use it in English too. Voila, you have a a Halloween costume. So, you will often see one or two ghosts um really short ghosts uh during the Halloween season or on the evening of Halloween. Sometimes people dress up as witches. So, a witch is a character who maybe if you read books, you'll read about witches. I think there's witches in Macbeth if you ever read Shakespeare. Witches sometimes make potions and they do magic and sometimes they're considered to be bad people but there are things like um yeah, I'm trying to think here. There is a good witch, isn't there? Uh in why can't I remember the name? Maybe someone could tell me what movie the good witch is. Oh, the wizard of Oz. There's a good witch. Um so, a witch is um kind of an evil woman uh that uh but not always. Sometimes they're good. Yeah, but sometimes people dress up as witches. I'm not explaining this one very well. You should look at the spelling of witch though. We have a few spellings of the word witch in <coughs> in English. Excuse me. I'm not quite sure what that was. But this is the scariest picture I have in the slideshow. These are zombies. Zombies, sometimes people dress up as zombies. It's become a lot more popular 
in the last 15 or 20 years, I think zombie movies have become very popular. A zombie is someone who has, well, they're a a fictional character who has died and come back to life. So, sometimes people will dress up as a zombie. I'm not a big fan of dressing up in ways that scare people like that but you probably have watched movies with zombies and if you go out for Halloween, you'll definitely see one or two kids dressed up as zombies. It does happen. What do you get at Halloween? You get candy or you get chocolate bars or candy bars. Um you go to a house, you ring the doorbell and then someone comes. So, we're ready to go here. We have the this is the box that we bought for uh, Halloween to hand out to kids. So, you can see there are I don't know how close I can put this. Will it focus? Here we go. So, there are four different kinds of chocolate bars in here. In my part of Canada, I call these chocolate bars. In some parts of the world, they would call them candy bars. We usually don't hand out candy. We usually hand out chocolate bars. I think because I like chocolate bars and so, that's what we hand out. These chocolate bars are quite small. So, we usually should I open it? If I open it, will I start eating them? I might start eating them if I open it but I'm gonna open it to show you. Jen said we can't open this till actual Halloween but you can see let me get one of each of these out. I'm not gonna eat them. I promise. Uh you can see that they're quite small. Um so, we usually let kids this one has a coffee flavor. Kids don't really like that one. Um in Canada, Smarties are actually a form of chocolate and then we have Kit Kat which you might be familiar. We usually let the kids who come to our door, we usually let them take about five or six, a small handful. Um we don't actually have a lot of kids come to our house for Halloween. So, we usually give out quite a bit of chocolate. We would just refer to all of these things as treats. So, the candies, the chocolate, all of it is simply called treats. Sometimes people hand out licorice, they hand out small bags of potato chips, they hand out chocolate. Um we would just refer to all of them as treats and now you can see why kids say trick or treat because they get a treat. Uh so, I mentioned when I was a kid uh that one of our neighbors would give us money and that neighbor still does give out money. We have a neighbor who instead of getting actually our kids would get candy, they would get chocolate and they would get a loony which is one dollar in Canada and I think the last time we went out a few years ago, they got a toonie from our neighbor. So, at some places, they will hand out money. It's rare though but uh, it does happen sometimes. Uh we also had a neighbor that would give each of our kids a can of pop You might call it soda in your part of the world. Um my kids really liked going to that neighbor because they liked getting a can of pop for Halloween um and it was uh yeah. That's not a common thing to get. Most kids, if you go trick or treating in a city, if you go to a house, you will get one little chocolate bar or one little candy, okay? That is the most common thing to happen but because I live out in the country, I think the treats were a little bigger and better because people knew kids weren't going to a lot of different houses. Um when kids go out for Halloween, they will take a bag with them. They will have a bag to go trick or treating. Um usually, it's just any old bag. We would just use reusable grocery bags but sometimes kids will have an actual bag that has you know a jack-o'-lantern on the side and they'll take that out when they go trick or treating. They'll have a special bag um when they go out to get candy. Uh, But yeah, you do need a bag because you're usually gonna end up with almost half a bag of candy depending on how long you go out for and how many houses you go to. So, many people, let me get this a little bit bigger for you. There we go. So, I'm not sure if you can see this but some people will decorate the outside of their house for Halloween. We don't decorate our house for Halloween. Sometimes we'll have a couple jack-o'-lanterns out which I'll show you in a moment Um, but we don't put up lights and we don't put up scary things but some people like to decorate their house for Halloween which means they'll put out you know some lights, some pumpkins and some other things which I'll talk about uh, to make their house look a little bit spooky. So, the English word spooky means a little bit scary or a little bit um frightening. People will try to maybe they'll have 
a little speaker outside playing spooky sounds. Maybe they'll have you know different things on the front of their house like if you look in this picture you can see there's cobwebs and a candle and a spider and a jack-o'-lantern. Let's talk about all of those things. So, pumpkins are the most common thing to see outside of someone's house for two reasons. Uh one, it's very close to Thanksgiving right now. Canadian Thanksgiving was two weeks ago. American Thanksgiving is about three weeks after Halloween. So, the same some of the same decorations that people put outside their house for Halloween like pumpkins also work as decorations for Thanksgiving which for Americans is coming up in a few weeks. None of the spooky decorations stay out for Thanksgiving but some people might have bales of straw. They might have pumpkins and other things. So, that it kind of works for both holidays but if you need a pumpkin you will usually make a trip to a pumpkin patch. This is a very common fall activity for people in North America. You will go with your family especially if you have little kids. You will go with your family to a pumpkin patch and you will pick out a pumpkin or two and you will buy them and take them back to your house and maybe put them on your front step or outside your front door. I have not gone to a pumpkin patch for a long time. Um in fact, I don't know if I've ever gone to a pumpkin patch with our kids. No, maybe once. I'll have to ask Jen. Um but I know a few of my colleagues with little kids are going to a pumpkin patch tomorrow on Saturday to pick out some pumpkins to decorate their house. Uh and what people will do is they will uh make what's called a jack-o'-lantern. A jack-o'-lantern is a pumpkin where you remove everything from the inside. You cut a hole in the top and you take off what's now like a lid and you clean out the inside of the pumpkin. All of the seeds and there's some you know gooey wet insides that you take out and then you will carve a face in the front or another design and you will put a candle or a flashlight or a little lant lantern inside the pumpkin and it's a really cool it looks really cool in the dark okay. You can see here let me make this bigger. Uh you can see here that the pumpkins glow orange. So, the light comes out the front. Um many people will do this as an activity close to Halloween uh with their kids. They'll buy a pumpkin. They'll make jack-o'-lanterns. Kids do this often at school as an activity in our area as well. Um sometimes people will put spiders outside their house. You can see there's a big spider fake spider on this pillar. And this house in particular, this is a pretty standard um front door for someone's house close to Halloween. People will decorate and it will look like that. Spiders are also scary and spooky. Um all of the things that frighten people show up around Halloween. Um and then people will put up fake spider webs or what we sometimes call cobwebs. So, spider webs and cobwebs are the little um web that a spider will make in real life but people will actually buy um fake spider webs and put spider webs up in the front of their house to make it look a little more spooky as well. And then interesting people will often have some kind of skeleton. This year in North America a few people have bought really really tall skeletons. They're like 12 feet tall so three meters tall. I think that would be almost four meters tall. I they scare me. I don't like skeletons but people will sometimes decorate the front of their house with skeletons. You can see now how Halloween is a very weird thing because it's about kids dressing up and going out to get candy but it is also about people trying to scare each other a little bit. So, it's fun for kids but it's also kind of scary. I'm it's kind of a it's a weird It's a weird thing to celebrate in my opinion. Um people will often have like little fake bats on the front of their house. A bat is a small animal that flies around at night and eats insects. So, people will buy fake bats. You understand the word fake I think right? They go to a store and they buy a bat that's made out of plastic and they'll put a few bats on the front of their house as decoration. And then there's always some kind of monsters somewhere. I think this might be Frankenstein. I'm not 100% sure but uh monsters are any kind of you know imaginary 
um, being that is meant to scare people. So, sometimes people will have fake monsters at the front of their house um just to uh give people a little bit of a fright to scare people a little bit. Um let me see. Oh, yes. Let's go one more. And sometimes people will put tombstones or what we also would call uh gravestones in their yard. They'll actually have fake ones and it'll say RIP on it. Can you understand now why I said this is a strange thing, Halloween? Because it's it's about fun and kids go out for candy and then people decorate their houses to be really scary. So, it's kind of weird but a tombstone is where after someone dies and they're buried in a cemetery or a graveyard, they'll put a tombstone there with their name and so, people will sometimes put fake tombstones on their front yard and RIP means rest in peace. So, um yeah, kind of a strange a strange thing to do. So, someone asked what are the three most common things to do on Halloween? So, number one, if you're a kid, you go out trick-or-treating and you get candy. Number two, if you're old, you probably stay home and hand out candy. But number three, if you are a a teenager or someone in your 20s, maybe even in your 30s, you might go to a Halloween party. Um these are fairly common at universities. Right now on the news last night, they said the police are warning university students not to have big Halloween parties. Um so, we have a few universities close to us. Uh so, on the news, they said the police are concerned that the Halloween parties this year will be too big because of the pandemic and COVID. Um so, generally, those are the three things you do. If you're a kid, you go out trick-or-treating and you get candy. If you're old like me, you hand out candy and if you're younger, if you're in your late teens or you're in your 20s and you're young and wild and free, you might go to a Halloween party. You might dress up even though you're an adult, you would wear a costume and go to a party. Um so, there's something called a haunted house. So, a haunted house is uh, a house where you pay money to walk through the house and then they try to scare you. It's kind of hard to describe unless you go to one. You can only go to a haunted house around this time of year. Sometimes if you go to a pumpkin patch to get a pumpkin, they might also have a haunted house there. So, a haunted house is basically an old building or place where you go and you pay money to get scared. It's kind of weird to think about. It's done for entertainment. It's done for fun. I have only been to one haunted house in my life. Uh, and it did scare me. It I think I mentioned it earlier when I was younger. I went to a haunted house where you rode a little you were in a little car. It's kind of hard to describe. It was like a little mini roller coaster haunted house. I don't know. I'm not making any sense but it scared me. I don't like haunted houses. You might uh watch a horror movie. So, earlier we had the question about the Halloween movies or Chucky or there's a whole genre of movies called Halloween movies um and these are movies that are designed to entertain people by scaring them, okay? I've only seen one horror movie in my life. I think it was Pet Cemetery by from Stephen King um and I didn't like it. I really like movies but I am not a fan of horror movies. Some people love horror movies. They love movies um where there's just a lot of violence and people running around in the dark and it's scary and there's monsters and I don't like them. I just don't. (laughs) I just do not do not like horror movies at all. Um here's a movie poster from a really old one um but uh I will not be celebrating Halloween by watching a horror movie. I mentioned earlier that people will do uh pumpkin carving. Uh pumpkin carving is something you do after you buy a pumpkin. You can see here that what you do is you cut out the top of the pumpkin and then you use a knife to cut usually a face but sometimes people will do um like really decorative carving. They'll really do something cool and there are actually pumpkin carving competitions uh in some places uh, around us right now. So, if you are really good at it, you could win a competition. And then one thing that shows up this time of year, this isn't specifically about Halloween but we have a lot of things that you can buy that have pumpkin spice flavor. So, you can go and get a coffee that's pumpkin spiced flavored coffee. You can get pumpkin spiced flavored cake. You can get pumpkin spice flavored anything 
You can get pumpkin spiced flavored candles. I know that sounds weird because you don't eat a candle but it smells like pumpkin spice. The only way I can describe pumpkin spice is you have to uh you have to experience it to know if you like it or not. I'm not a big fan of pumpkin spice.